She's known as the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach and has 25 years experience helping small business owners and entrepreneurs get more love in their life and money in their business. She's a 10-time best-selling author with 16 books, including Jumpstart Your New Business Now and Love Yourself Successful, the book this summit is geared around. Help me welcome Katrina Sawa, your host for the Love Yourself Successful Summit and gift giveaway. Take it away, Katrina. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Helen, for being so animated back there. I love it. And Jane, some of you are very, very animated and it's very helpful for us speakers. And uh, welcome back to another session of the Love Yourself Successful Summit. And we are going to go right into it with Patricia Steffler. And Patricia is an amazing coach and speaker. And she is going to talk to us today about unleashing your inner power and living bigger. Who doesn't want that? Live bigger. Woo -woo. Take it away, Patricia. Well, thank you, Katrina, for inviting me here today to speak. So I have a question for you. If you just put in the chat a one, if you have some desire or some goal that you'd like to achieve this year. Okay, well, it looks like we have a lot of people have some goals to achieve. Well, since this is the Love Yourself Success Summit, do you love yourself enough to do whatever it takes to get that goal or that desire. Just put a yes in the chat. Oh, yes. <laughs> great, 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 great. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to imagine yourself a year from now and you're sitting around with your friends and you realize that you have just achieved that goal. How would that make you feel? Just put a little answer there in the chat. Amazing. Woohoo. Yeah. Very accomplished. Absolutely. Grateful. Fantastic. Yes. Jubilant. Happy dance. I like that one. Happy dance. Okay. That's great. So anyway, what I want you to do is to realize that my name is Patricia Stepler. And what I do is I help businesses and entrepreneurs to create those goals and to accomplish those goals. Like my client who went from basically 150,000 to um, probably 7 million this year in about seven or eight years. And that's what I love to help people do. And you see, I believe that you were born rich in all facets of your life. And I also believe that um, inside each one of us, we have this inner power where we can accomplish anything that we truly want once we tap into it. So what, what's missing in most of our lives is those tools of that inner power. So right now, I just, I love my life. I, I get to travel. I have the freedom to do what I want to do pretty much when I want to do it. And one of my big goals was to be able to take my family on wonderful trips. And I get to do that now. And I just really enjoy that, you know, traveling with them on a cruise or to Hawaii or, you know, and my goal was to travel. And now I'm looking at my calendar, trying to figure out how to get all the travel in, in this year when I have other things I need to do too. And so, but it wasn't always that way. And life wasn't always so great to me. And for most of my life, I felt like I wasn't good enough. Anybody else ever feel like you weren't good enough? Ah, I see some hands. Yes. Well, I always felt like even with my extended family of cousins, that I was the one that was the least successful, kind of almost to the failure. And, you know, that's not a happy feeling, is it? When you, when you feel like you're not enough. And what you have to do is you have to realize that your mind's programmed. Just like the computer in your front, you're in front of is programmed, our minds are programmed. And most of our programming started way back when we were little. And so right now we are just dealing with that programming. You see, up until about age seven or eight, we don't have a filter to decide if we're going to accept, accept something or not. So all those messages we hear from the time we're an infant up to about seven or eight just goes pouring into our subconscious and our self-image 
is programmed in our subconscious. And so the person that you are today is a culmination of all the thoughts that you've had up to this point. And so if you're not happy with where you are today, that's because of the thoughts that you've been thinking up to this point. But the good news is you can change and you don't have to think those thoughts. Just like I don't think of myself as not good enough anymore. I know I'm plenty good. But let me tell you this really powerful story. There's a man named Jim Sundberg. I don't know if anybody's heard of him or not, but Jim Sundberg was a major league baseball player and he played for the Texas Rangers and the Kansas City Royals. And after he finished his career with baseball, he decided to go into public speaking. And so one day he was speaking in a prison and he was telling his story of being a child and, and the great time he had with his dad playing catch in the backyard. And he said that one time he was playing catch and he overthrew his dad and he thought his dad would be very upset with him. And his dad just looked at him and said, son, anybody who can throw a ball like that is going to be in a major league someday. And then they had batting practice. And the one time he hit the ball and it went flying through his neighbor's window. And he thought his dad would be very upset. But his dad looked at him and said, son, anybody who can hit a ball like that is going to be in the major league someday. So his point was, this whole story was that when he grew up, what was there for him to do but to be in the major leagues? And you see, his mind was programmed that way. His father had instilled those thoughts in him, and he continued to work and strive towards being a major league baseball player. Well, after he was done speaking, one of the prisoners came up to him and said, Mr. Sunberg, I had a dad sort of like yours. My dad told me I was no good. He told me I'd never amount to anything and I'd probably end up in prison someday. And he said, I guess I fulfilled his dream for me too. Get you right here, doesn't it? This is really a powerful story. You see the thoughts, the words, the things we say to ourselves impact our lives. And if we start to believe those negative things, then it can be a real problem. You're exactly right. That is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly right, Phyllis. And that's what happened to him. Well, let me tell you another little story. This one hits a little close to home, but this is about how we need to use our inner powers to become more than we think we can be. My son, Danny, about 27 years ago, a little over 27 years, was born and he had a collapsed lung. So he wasn't getting enough oxygen to his air or to his um, brain. And so he had to be airlifted out. And that was solved. And that was terrifying enough. And then when he was about one year old, we noticed when he was walking, his legs were bowing because he was a little chubby. And he, he was almost like his feet were almost walking over top of each other. And so he had to get his legs straightened so he could walk and to run. Well, then when he was in kindergarten, his um, kindergarten teacher noticed that his eye just went out to the side. And she told me about this at a parent conference and I'd never seen that happen. She said, yeah, his left eye sometimes will just go out to the side and come right back. Well, sure enough, a couple of days later, he's sitting in the bathtub and I see his right eye go out to the side and back. Did you hear that left eye, right eye? He had two lazy eyes. So we had to get those taken care of because otherwise he wouldn't be able to swing a bat or catch a ball, his perception. And even today, there's certain jobs he could not do because he has lazy eyes, even though they are um, fairly um, straightened out. But then when he was almost nine years old, he was diagnosed with juvenile diabetes. Just at the time, he wanted to be an athlete. Well, that didn't stop him. But I want you to understand how he used his inner power because he came to me and maybe you heard this story on Katrina's um, interview with me, but he, he got a college scholarship and it came the most unusual way. But this is how inner powers work and how there's a source of energy up here. I heard somebody earlier today talk about the law of vibration, the law of attraction, and that's everything's moving and we don't always know what's happening. Well, when he wanted to get that college scholarship, you see, he had a team 
that was close to us that had pretty good reputation for getting kids scholarships, you know, maybe, you know, a third or half of their scholarship. And so he decided that was a team he needed to be on. So he tried out, he made their fall team. They said, you do a really good job and you can be on our team between your junior, senior year, which is the time when baseball players get recruited. So he played very well for him, for that team in the fall, did a great job came time for tryouts for the summer team. And I remember sitting in this um, gymnasium when they were trying out and my son was last. He was the last one to run. He was the last one to swing the bat. He just was last. And I noticed when he was in the batting cage, the coaches weren't even paying any attention to him. And as I'm sitting in the stands, I'm thinking, now, is that because he did such a good job for them in the fall and they just already figured he's going to be on the team so they don't need to pay attention to him? Or are they just not watching him? Well, sure enough, it was Valentine's Day when he got this message that he did not make the team. And I knew something was wrong because he always said goodbye to me before he went off to school. And that day he didn't say anything. And what I didn't know was he went to a cul-de-sac in our neighborhood and cried because he thought he'd lost his dream of getting a scholarship. Well, see, what he didn't know was there's a power in whatever you want to call it. Napoleon Hill called it infinite intelligence. You can call it source energy. You can call it God. But there's a power that exists out there that's part of your inner power that brings things that you're not aware of. Well, this is what happened. We scrambled to find a new team. And there was another team about an hour away from us. And they had one opening for, they actually had two teams and their A team had one opening. And it was for an outfielder. That's the position my son played. He went, he tried out, they took him on that team. And you see what source energy or God or infinite intelligence knew that my son didn't know in his plan was that there was a team in Georgia. We live in Pennsylvania. There was a team in Georgia connected to this baseball team. And that was how he could get a scholarship. You see, his plan wasn't going to work. The team he wanted to be on, it wouldn't work. But there was another idea out there, another way for him to go. And so we can choose. He could have decided that day he was crying in the cul-de-sac. He could decide to have been a victim. You know, why didn't it happen? What's wrong with me? Why couldn't I do it? But instead, we use that power of the source energy. You see, knowingly or unknowingly, we think thoughts and we build these mental pictures. And we can decide if things are good or bad. And everything that happens in our life, we have actually caused. And sometimes that's hard to believe because we say, well, I didn't want that bad thing to happen. I want to earn a lot of money. Why is my bank account empty? What words do you say to yourself? Do you say to yourself, my bank account's empty? I don't have any money for that. Or oh, I'd like to buy that, but I can't afford it. You see, every time you're saying that, the universe is just going to respond to you. And it's going to say, okay, you don't want any money. We'll make sure you don't have any. Okay, you're thinking of disease. We're going to make sure you get a disease. The mind is powerful and we can make those choices to not say those things so that we start to, to get what it is that we do want. So if, if it's money that you're, you want to earn, why not say things like money flows to me? Money comes to me, multiple sources and in increasing quantities on a continuous basis. You know, that's one Bob Proctor used to say. Bob Proctor was a mentor of mine. And honestly, he was the one that taught me about the source energy and how it's always there and always there to empower us. And so I want you to remember, you have a choice. You can think abundance or you can think lack, but you can't have abundance if you're thinking lack. And so we have to choose what vibration we want to be on. What frequency do we want to be on? You know, if you have a higher level that you want to get to, then you have to become that person first. And I often tell my clients, you know, 
you are today as far as you're going to go unless you do something different. And we need to keep that in mind. Everything that we have today is a culmination of all the thoughts that we've had. But if we want to go higher, we have to change our thoughts and we have to begin to do different things, have different actions. So the only reason you don't have that goal that you said you want right now is because you're not that person yet. You haven't gotten on the frequency of that dream. But once you start to match the frequency and live there, it has to happen because that's a law and the law works for everybody. You know, in the book, um, The Science of Getting Rich, Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, he talks about um, truth. And truth is, let's just say that's your goal. That's where you want to be is truth. But we think reality because we, we interact with the world with our senses. And so if we want to think truth, that's hard work. And Waddle says, that's why most people won't do it. Because to have that sustained thought of who we want to be and what it is we want is the hardest work in the world. And so what I want you to do is to start thinking, take that idea of what it is you want and start seeing yourself there. What kind of person do you need to be to accomplish that goal? What kind of ideas do you need to have? What kind of actions do you need to do in order to accomplish that? Because that's what you need to do. You can't just think surface thought and get those deep, meanings of what you want. So if you're ready to take those next steps, I do have a special offer here for you today. You know, I, I mentioned that um, I have worked with Bob Proctor. And in fact, I was personally coached by him for a year. And he, he was a great mentor to me. And so I actually had put a program together which I called Shifting Results, which is actually um, a study of his book that he wrote, um, You Were Born Rich. And I've put that together and I usually sell it for $997. But what I'm gonna do is to give that to you today for $97. If you just follow this link and you can also, I'm gonna do two deep dive sessions in March that will really help you to unlock these ideas of that higher power. And um, also uh, you can book a free call there. And I did have a free gift on the other page that has a lot of stuff on it too that um, I'm giving it to overcome procrastination and fear and to build your self image. So I guess now I'll just open this up to any questions. Mm, super juicy offer. Wow. Good job. Lots of free stuff and lots of ways to try her out. You guys, this is the thing. Who else uh, has any, anybody have any questions for Patricia? I know somebody said that uh, Renee, Bob Proctor's death was a big loss for our society, right? Oh, huge personally, loss. Yes. Personally. So Mm. come on what you got I know it's late in the day for some of you but what did you get out of this Laura what kind of questions or comments it's nice to meet you um I think we met but anyway um as a what's your best suggestion regarding collaboration and working together to to show love for um the client and um each other at the same time I think you can send love to them um, through your thoughts. Um, have you ever read the book? Um, oh, the title's not coming to me. But it's talking about, your in, it's by, um, hmm. not right here, um, Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard wrote a book. And in it, he tells a story about this lady who um, worked for a man who she did not, think liked her okay and he was always criticizing her and and he told her you start thinking differently 
and try this sometime because if you think, if your thoughts, if you start to think about somebody else differently and you start to interact with them differently, they automatically have to start interacting with you differently. It's just the way it works. So if you're feeling with a client and like you're having a client that maybe is not um, getting it or you don't think likes you or you just needs love, start sending them love. You know, just start those feelings that, that they're loved and wrapping your arms around them and, you know, figuratively. And eventually they're going to start to get that too. And so when you start, anytime you start to interact with somebody differently, they're going to have to interact differently with you. It's sounding like some Marianne Williamson. I'm sorry, what? Sounding like some Marianne Williamson going on. Oh, wow. could be. <laughs> wow. Thank you. So Patty, Sharon, before Renee, Sharon had a question. How similar is this to positive affirmations, she says? So I think positive affirmations, and I do use positive affirmations, but I also think that it's, it's a thought process. And I'll give you an example. I had a gentleman one time I talked to and, and he had, he could rattle off one positive affirmation, one quote after another, after another, but you know what? He'd never embedded them. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that Bob Proctor really taught me was that, you know, as long as those thoughts are just in your conscious mind, nothing's going to happen. It's just not because your, your action is by the subconscious mind. So you really have to embed those. So if you say that positive affirmation over and over again, and you start to believe it as you embed it into your subconscious, then your body will go into action. But if you never get it embedded in your subconscious, nothing's going to really happen in your life different. Good point. Love that. Renee, what you got? Patricia, <clears throat> thank you so much for your talk. Um, I'm a healthcare advocate. Kit, and I work with uh, families, especially families that are, have loved ones that have uh, maybe a behavioral health or a mental health component. And oftentimes, I assist the family in dealing with compassion fatigue. Can you speak to that? Just kind of how to get our collective thoughts out of that fatigue and just tiredness to whatever we're maneuvering through. So I... I remember, you know, dealing with my son with diabetes. That was not easy. Mm -hmm. It is a lifestyle change, not just for him, but for an ent our entire family. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he went from taking insulin shots to an insulin pump, there were times that I wanted to take that pump and throw it right through the window. Mm -hmm. It was just so frustrating. And you know what? There were several times when I just got really discouraged dealing with it. I never wanted him to know that. I never wanted him to realize that I was struggling. And every time I would struggle, I'd be placed in a situation with a parent dealing with something far worse than I was dealing with. And I think sometimes we just have to realize that the struggles we have, there's always somebody in a, in a worse situation. Mm -hmm. And it does become exhausting. You know, when you're dealing with something 24 seven, it's an exhausting thing to deal with. And I think we sometimes have to just kind of go out of ourselves and be grateful for what we do have and be grateful that maybe we're not dealing with something even worse. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that helps you or not, Renee, but it does. That's it does. thank you, thank you. Awesome. One more thing. Um, Mary Greenlee asked, does this work as well with family members as with clients? Yes, it does. Yes. Good. Yeah. Everything I've, I've been talking about, you know, yeah, I can use it with clients, but I also use it with family members. Great. Yeah. Awesome. We'll give her a hand, you guys. Yay, Patricia. Thank Thanks you so for much. being here. Thanks for showing up everyone on video. Yay. We love to see your smiling faces.